There are two ways to do these, with and without the clutch. I'm actually going to start without the bike even running. I'm going to hold both brakes the entire time, get up on the pegs, drop my knees down to start the front end moving, and just try to keep it in sync. It's all about timing, dropping your knees down towards the front axle when the front tire hits, and once it compresses and it's ready to rebound, then you snap your knees back and pull your hands to your hips. If you can get that rhythm, it really helps to just keep it going. The biggest problem I usually see is people trying to go too fast and not waiting for the suspension to compress and rebound. So they start to just slam the front end up and down, use a lot of arms and waste a lot of energy. It can work, but it's not as controllable. And it's not as precise as a nice slow hop. You can put it right where you want it and make little movements. Once you have that down, you can work on single hops. So you just want to find your balance, drop your knees, snap them back, pull up with your hands, land, and balance again. Once you get the hops going well enough up and down, it's time to start moving in the direction you want to go side to side. And to do that, I like to initiate it by pushing a little bit harder on the inside foot peg and pushing down on the inside grip as I compress. And then I correct it by pulling up harder on that inside grip and controlling it with my foot pegs. I also lean my hips into it just a little bit to try to keep my body in the same place I want to be on the bike. Again, both brakes stay completely locked the entire time. Just trying to use the suspension to help hop the bike left and right. And you can do little hops and big hops, but smaller ones are more precise and easier to land balanced. Even with the brakes locked the entire time, you might find that you work your way backwards, which is why you don't want to do a whole lot of this in the section, but it's great to learn just have the bike not running and just try to get the feel and timing of the suspension and your body to get the bike to go where you want it. You also want to be looking in the direction you're going exactly where you want to put your front tire. That just helps you land a little more balanced and in control and ready for the next obstacle. Once you have that down with the dead engine, it's time to start the bike up and use the clutch to help you move the front end even easier. Everything with your body is the same as before except once you compress and you're about to snap your knees back and pull up, you're going to let off the brake and let the clutch out slightly and that'll help bring the front end up and it will move it forward if you need to. If you want to set it over a root, over a rock or something like that and you need to clear some distance, it'll help you maintain your forward motion instead of being locked in that rocking back and forth position. Just like before, I have both brakes on, but now the clutch is in, I'm in gear and when I go down, I'm going to let the brakes off, slip the clutch. Let the brakes off, slip the clutch. Let the brakes off, slip the clutch. If you don't want to go very far forward, you can be really quick to get in back on the brakes, pull the clutch in right after you slip it out, right once the front tire's in the air, and it'll keep you planted pretty well. You can probably see the rear tire just moving barely, maybe a quarter turn, if that. And that's all it takes to help lift the front end up. You can control it with the brakes and the clutch wherever you want to bring it down. Well, that's pretty much it for front tire hops. Just remember, practice makes perfect. The more you work on them, the better you'll get. It might take thousands of attempts before you're comfortable and confident to use them in a section, but when you do, you'll be thankful that you did because you'll save a lot of points.